Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it prove to be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are my strength, and Lord, you are indeed my redeemer. And this we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Uh, may we all say together, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. all right, man, I'm excited about this series in August that we're doing, and that is the secrets of a well-lived life. The secrets of a well-lived life. God gives us the gift of life. We got to give ourselves the gift of living well. And that's what we want to be talking about the entire month that, uh, that we're going to be sharing this word of God with you on today. This morning Bible study, we're going to be talking about God's dream for your life. God's dream for your life. Amen. And you have to keep in mind that everything that we have, everything that happens in this world starts with a dream. You know, no, nobody would have ever come up with a car until somebody dreamed it first. And nobody would ever come up with the way a house looked as if somebody, what, dreamed it first. So, I mean, dreams are very necessary because dreams determine destiny. You know, dreams do several things for us, amen? Dreams direct us. You'd be surprised at how many people are directed by their dreams. You know, dreams give us direction. You know, and a lot of things that I wanted to do in my life, I got the direction. It started with a dream. Dream not only directs us, dream designs us. It designs us. It's given us a really kind of a course of, of, of what direction we want to go in. You know, let me tell you something. It's time for me to retire as a pastor of this church when I stop dreaming about it. When I stop dreaming about it, you know, when I stop dreaming and getting a design from God as to where you know, uh, this church is going. Amen? Because how many of you know the excitement of life uh, is not it's celebrating just where you're at. The excitement of life is celebrating where you're going. Because that's what the excitement is. Man. It's like a relationship. Relationships are exciting when you can see where it's going. You know, not just celebrate where it is. Where it is. And so it starts with the dream. Dream define us. Dream define us, man. I mean, because there are some people who are so grounded in their dreams that they won't give up their dream. You know, people are telling you, hey, man, you need to do something else. You know, I know what I dreamed. And so I'm not going to give up my dream. Dreams would define you. Dreams would determine your destiny. They would determine your destiny. The destiny of my life, man. They, they, the dreams actually determine all of that, Amen. Now, but we were talking about just not ordinary dreams, because all of us dream all the time. A lot of dreams we don't remember, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of, a lot of dreams don't even make sense. But there are some dreams that God would put in, uh, that you would have in your heart, that you say, hey man, I always dreamed I was going to be a nurse. I always dreamed I was going to be a preacher. I always dreamed I was going to be a pastor. You know what? I didn't know how God was going to bring it to pass, but I always dreamed that I, this is what I would be in my life. But we want to talk about today God's dream. And how do you know the difference between your dream and God's dream? Now, your dream is always about you. Your dreams always promote you. Amen? You know, you, you, your dreams share your own program. Your dreams are how people are telling you, you be telling folks, well, I know what I want to do. I know what I want to do. I know this is about me. God's dream is different. When God puts a dream in your heart, it's going to be two-dimensional. One, it's going to always be about others. It's always be about others. When God has a dream in your life, he has a dream in your life by which he uses you to bless others. To bless others. The second dimension of God's dream for your life is to know that when God put a dream in your life, it's always big, so big, that you can't pull it off without him. Amen. 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 Then you know that's got to be God's dream. Because you know what? If, if he don't help me with this, there ain't no way in the world I can do it. Because see, if it's natural, it's you. If it's supernatural, it's God. Amen. If it's natural, only you can do it. If it's supernatural, only God can do it. Because we're not supernatural, only God is supernatural. Amen. So when God puts a dream in your heart, man, it'll be so big. I mean, you see yourself, it'll be so big, it'll always be about somebody else but it will always be designed that only God can help you pull that off. Amen? Amen? And so that's, that's the essence of what dreams is all about. Your dream is always going to be personal. 
Because you got to keep in mind that everybody is not going to understand your dream. Everybody is not going to be aboard with your dream. People are very quickly to try to tell you what they think you ought to be doing as though they made you. And so you got to understand when God puts a dream in your, in your heart, sometimes, you know, you got to understand it's personal. It's about you. It's about you. Some people will grab it and some people won't. Some people will see it and some people will not see it. So don't get shocked when folk don't see your dream because your dreams are personal. Your dreams are God's plan for your life. It is God's plans for what? Your life. And so remember, I'm going to go to a scripture which is John 10, 27 and 29. We're going to come back to our text here on John, uh, Jeremiah. But John 27, 29, listen, listen to what Jesus said in that scripture, man. That was so important when he talked about it. He said, number one, my sheep hear my voice. Now, you got to understand what Jesus is talking about. There's a difference between listening and hearing. When I listen to you, I'm conscious of what you're saying. When I'm hearing you, I'm giving my attention to what you're saying. So that's a whole different concept of that. You ever, ever had your mama call you and you call you and you don't respond to it? And she said, did you hear what I said? Because a hearing always requires a response. A listening does not require that. So I can be totally quiet. Okay? So Jesus says, my sheep, they don't just listen to me. They hear me. Why? Because they respond to what I say. You know, when I grew up, my, my daddy would say, listen, listen, I'm going to call you one time. And after I call you that one time, you better respond. So my daddy would call you, you had to say, yes, sir. I mean, you had to respond. And so the sheep would hear my voice, and the Bible said, and I know them, and they what? They follow what? Me. That means they give me their attention. Verse 28, and I give unto them eternal life, and they should never perish, neither shall any man what? Pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29. My father, which I gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to what? To pluck them what? Out of my father's hand. So he says in 28, they can't pluck them out of my hand. So therefore, you and I are in Jesus' hand. Then we can't pluck them out of my father's hand, which means that we are in Jesus' hand. Jesus is in God's hand. So if we're in Jesus' hand and Jesus is in God's hand, we got double security. And what do I mean by double security? It means that anybody got to get us, they got to first go through Christ. If they go, try to go through Christ, they got to go through God. And so even if the devil come after you, he got to go through Christ. If that ain't bad enough because Christ and God is one, he got to go through what? He got to go through also the Father. So my hand is in Jesus' hand. Jesus' hand is in God's hand. And by the time you go through all of that, the devil will be converted. And so here's the thing I'm trying to get you to understand. That God's plan are determined to give us a hope, and God plans determined to give us a future. Now go back to Jeremiah. Will you go back to Jeremiah with me? Go back to Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, for I know the thoughts I think about you. That's I, I, I know the thoughts that I think about you. Why? Because I know everything about you already. <laughs> so I ain't got to think about you. I know what I'm thinking about you. Amen? And I got thoughts of peace. And what is the peace that God is talking about? He's talking about a right relationship with him. And not of what? Evil. Evil is when you what? Outside of the will of God. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you an expected end. Oh my God. Amen. So whatever that happens in your life, whatever's happened in my life has not been accident. It's providence. And the fact is that God provided that for me. Amen. If you got a car, that ain't no accident. That was providence. God just provided that for you. No matter how you got it, you didn't get it without God because God provided for you. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? And so therefore, this is what he's talking about when it comes to a dream. How do you get God's dream for your life? I mean, how do you get that? How do you get God's dream for your life? I want to take the word dream and I want to use it as an acrostic. So I want you to write your, out on your paper. Start with the D 
Every letter in dream has a, has a, a directive I want to give you today on how do you get God's dream for your life. Now, the word D simply means dedicate your life. In order to get God's dream in your life, you got to start off by number one, by dedicating your life. By dedicating your life. Let me say this to you. Nobody cannot know the will of God if they're seriously committed to him. If you're seriously committed to God, it is impossible for you not to know the will of God. It's, a, it's, just, it's impossible. Go to Romans 12, 1 and 2. For I beseech you therefore, brethren, brethren, brethren is a relationship term. It's a relationship with God. God calls us his brethren. Brothers is a blood term. Okay? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Bre uh, Reverend Hampton is your brother because of blood. But when we are saved, we are brothering. So he says, we are what? I beseech you what? Beseech you means I urge you. I beg you. I encourage you. Therefore, brothering by the mercies of God. Now, this is very important. How do we become brethren? We become brethren by what? The mercies of God. God. Why? Because God didn't give us what we deserve. So all of us are saved today. We're saved by his what? By his mercy. By his mercy. And out of mercy came his grace. And so therefore, by the mercies of God. Now, what do you do? You present your bodies. I'm just exegeting this for you. Now, what it mean by present? Offer your bodies. Offer to God. Now, if God has saved you, the, the psalmist said, what do I render to the Lord for all of his benefits? God said, this is what I want you to render to me. Present me your body. Now, what does it mean, present you your body? He means everything that you are. Yeah, everything that you are. Amen? God said, I want all of you. Why? Because I want to use your body as an instrument of righteousness. And so therefore, God says, I need your hands because I need some work to be done. Uh, and I need to be able to use your hands and your hands will represent me. I need your mouth because I, you know what? I need a voice that can be heard. And so I need your voice to be able to represent me. I need your feet because I some places I need you to go. And so I need you to know, can I depend on you to go there when I want you to go there? And so God said, hey, you got to present your body. Your body, everything, your relationships, everything is an instrument for me. Your marriage is an instrument for me. And so present your bodies. Now, here is an oxymoron. He says, a living sacrifice. That's an oxymoron because if something is living, then it's no longer a sacrifice. A sacrifice is something that's dead. So what does God mean when he says a living sacrifice? Let me tell you what it means by that. He's saying, this is what you got to do. You got to die to you so I can live in you. Oh, my God. Amen. That's why, that's why in the book of Galatians it said, I'm crucified. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Yet not I live. It is Christ who's living what? In me. And so what you got to do, you got to be willing to sacrifice you. Jesus sacrificed himself so that you and I can live. Now, we sacrifice ourselves so that Jesus can live in us. Amen? That, that's, why, that, that's why the hymn writer said, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? And he says, no, there's a cross for everyone. And there is a cross, what? For me. There's a sacrifice God is making me to make. So what do I sacrifice to God? I sacrifice what I think. I sacrifice how I feel. I sacrifice how I, what I believe. Amen? You got to sacrifice those three things in your life and say, you know what, God? It doesn't matter what I think. You know what, God? It don't matter what I feel. You know what, God? It don't matter what I believe. It only matters what you say. And so this is what it means by a living sacrifice. Amen? When you become a living sacrifice, what comes out of that? You become holy. What is holy? Only God is holy. Then people will see the God in you. You become holy. And holiness, what? Is acceptable unto God. Oh, my God. So the only thing that God accepts is himself. 
Amen. He ain't going to accept nothing you bring to him because everything you bring to him is sin. And so God said, hey, I'm too holy. I can't even look at that. Guess what? So I put the Holy Ghost in you and I left the word of God in you so that you can bring back to me what I want. How many of you love the Lord? Okay. Loving somebody is giving them what they want. Not giving them what you want them to have. Amen. Amen. You're loving someone is behaving in a way that pleases them. Not in a way that pleases you. And so you got to understand that God says it's acceptable to God. Which is your reasonable what? Service. Now what do you mean by reasonable service? Reasonable service. Reasonable service. Amen. Okay, let's say, let's say, let me give an example of some reasonable service. Amen. You know, I, I love Sister Cook. Sister Cook and I, we're close. I love her. She thinks about me, you know. You know, when I need something, she, you know, I ain't got to ask her. She just think about me and just say, I'm going to bless Pastor today. Right. Now, what do you think I would do if Sister Cook came to me and said, Pastor, I need a favor from you? Wouldn't it be reasonable that I would comply with that? Yeah. Amen? Amen? You know, wouldn't it be reasonable if you gave me $100 and you came back later on and said, I need $5, wouldn't it be reasonable for me to reach in my pocket and give you $5? Because if I didn't do that, then somebody said, you must be crazy. So God said, think about what all I did to save you. Think about what all I did to bring you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So now I'm asking you to do something for me. That's reasonable. It's a matter of your thinking. That's reasonable. Because God said it's your reasonable what? Servant. Go to verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 2. And be not conformed to the world. The word conform is a potter's term. It's a term that was used uh, to give the relationship between the potter and the clay. And what the clay did is conform to the fingers of the potter. So whatever the clay became, it became a reflection of the mind of the potter. So God is saying, don't let yourself be molded by the thinking of the world. And what is the thinking of the world? Anything that's apart from the word of God. Anything that's apart from the word of God. So you got to look at your home, your marriage, your relationship. How's it molded? How's it molded? <laughs> Amen. I mean, who can you say did that? You know, great artists are known by their work. And so God is saying, don't be conformed to the world, but be what? Transformed. The word transform is changed. And what's going to change? By the renewing of your mind. And what's renewing means? It means exchanging your thinking of the world for the thinking of God. When I can, that's why you come to church. You come to church and I take all this time trying to put lessons together and try to put it in form. You can write notes down. Why? Because I'm trying to get you to change your thinking. And when you change your thinking, then you what? You exchange your thinking, you change your life. I told you before, the Christian is not just a, a representation of a changed life. It's a representation of an exchanged life. Because my life has changed because what I have exchanged. And that's why people don't change when they come to church. Because they never make an exchange. So you got to have an exchange to have bring a change. And so be you transformed by the renewing of the mind. So that you can prove that. That means you could give, you pass the test. And you can prove that which is good. What is good? Only God is good. So you can prove this is godly and acceptable. And watch this then. And the perfect will of God. Now, that word perfect is translated different. Okay? Okay? The word perfect normally means, in some contexts, means mature. The word perfect in some contexts means don't change. But in this context means it fits you. See, the will of God will fit you. Amen? That means it'll be perfect for you. How many of you ever put on an outfit and said, man, this is perfect for me? Why? Because it hits right. It just fits me. 
It just fits you. And that's what God said. When the will of God comes, you ain't going to want nothing else because this fits you. This is what you want to wear. This is where you want to go. This is the life you want to live. This is the direction you want to go. It just fits you. I'm not looking to do anything else. I'm a preacher and a pastor. And what? It fits me. It's the perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. And that comes out of what? When you seriously dedicate your life to God. That's, that's the D. That's the D. That's the D. Let's go to the R. You got to reserve the time to be alone with God. You got to reserve time to be alone with God. Go to Job 37, 14. Listen to what he said. He says, Hark it unto this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. I learned this a long time ago. <laughs> you can't hear God if you ain't quiet. <laughs> Amen. You want to hear God, man, you got to be quiet. You got to be quiet. Amen. You ain't crying. You ever try to talk to your children and they talk while you talking? No, no, shut up. Because you ain't going to hear me until you shut up. So God is saying the same thing to us. There ought to be a time with God where we just shut up. And say, okay, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening now. Your, your servant is listening now. Amen? Your servant is You know what? And then what's happened, you ask God, what direction is he headed for in with your life? What is your direction? What is your direction? You got to reserve the time to be alone with God. Reserve that time to be alone with God. That's the R. D, dedicate your life. R, reserve time to be alone with God. Ready for the E? Evaluate your abilities. Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship. Workmanship comes from a Greek word poema. Poema means a poem. Poem is a work of art. We are God's work of art. That's who we are. That's who we are. Amen. So whatever I am is God. He, he made this. <laughs> he made this, man. He made, he made it. This is his work. This is his work. I ain't had nothing to do with this. I ain't had a thing to do with this. Amen. This was God's work. Amen. And so therefore we are his work. And we've been created in Christ Jesus. Creation, again, is different from making. Because I everybody, you know, that was a poem when I grew up in, uh, in high school. And there was a poem called Invictus. And part of the end of the poem, the, the writer says, I am the master of my faith. And I am the captain of my soul. Amen. What an unspiritual message. Amen. No, no, no. You're not the master of your faith. And surely you're not the captain, what, of your soul. Because God says, whatever you are is because I created you to be that way. And what do I mean by created you to be that way? Amen. I didn't have to need your mama, your daddy, or your cousin, your pookie, bobo, or anybody to do that. What I did was took nothing and made something. Creation is the ability of God to speak nothing into something. You got to have something to make something. So in order for us to make something, we got to have something. God said, I can make something and have nothing. Because when you look at the resume of Pastor William Blunt, then nowhere in the world I should be preaching or nowhere in the world I should be pastoring the church. God had to make this out of nothing. I wish, amen. You pull up the resume of A.J. Saunders, amen. He'd be the one to tell you, man, if God was to hire me by resume, I would have been fired. I would have never got the job, amen. Because God, what, he didn't have nothing to work with. And so God created this. He made this out of what? Nothing. We've been created unto Jesus, what? Unto good works. Because I made you, I made you to work for me. That's good works. Why? Because God has before ordained them that we should walk in them. In other words, remember what happened to Jeremiah? When Jeremiah kept making excuses to the Lord? 
you know, about this. And God said, I want you to shut up with that, Jeremiah, because when you were in your mother's womb, I already ordained you. I already sanctified you. I already knew who you were. Don't you know if I tell you to do something, I already know you can do it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, God said, I had, I had this already figured out already before you. It was a gleam in your daddy's eye on a cold winter night. God said, I already knew this. And so here's the thing, man, I'm trying to get you to understand is that, you know, part of that, uh, you got to evaluate your abilities. Now, what do you mean to evaluate your abilities? Again, we talked about this on yesterday. You got to know who you are, what you need to do, and when you need to do it. Who I, who I am is the calling that God has placed on my life. So whatever I'm doing, because God called me to do this. So that's how I know who I am. See? And then what do I need to do is that God gave me this assignment. This is what I need to commit myself to. This is what I study so hard for and give my best effort. Why? I put my best in what I do so I can get his best through me. I don't know why we want to give God a little, but want God to give a lot. Amen. <laughs> that we want to do whatever, just get by, but we want God to just give us all these tremendous blessings. He's not going to do it. You want the best from God, you give God the best for you. You give God your best, he turns around and gives you his best. I mean, that's exactly, you limit yourself. Nobody can limit you but you. Amen. Nobody can limit you but you. Remember the woman with the oil? He told her, Elijah told her to go out and get all the vessels she needed. Then put a limit on it. Get all the empty vessels you can get. And the Bible says when the last vessel was filled, the oil stopped. She limited it by the number of vessels she brought. Because there is no limit on God. And so therefore, as long as I give God my best, then God turns around and give me his best. That's the attitude that you got to have. That's commitment. That's commitment, amen? And then you got to consider. You got to consider when God wants it done. Again, we told you yesterday that the right thing at the wrong time is always the wrong thing. Yeah, I know some people need to get, everybody need to get married, but you got to know when God wants you to marry. Just because you met her and she done blew your head open, that don't mean that she wants you to do it right now. Because how many of you can testify the biggest mistakes that you made in your life is that you did it at the wrong time? Amen? And you said, man, I should have waited. I should have waited. Because here's what happened. Because if you don't maximize your blessing where you at, then you won't be prepared for where you are. If you don't know how to maximize your single life, then you'll never be ready for married life. Because if you get married before you maximize your single life, you'll only get married and wish you were single again. And that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people do, amen? Because if you try to skip grades on God, he ain't gonna let you do that. So you're trying to skip grade, you're trying to get, skip kindergarten and go right to first grade, but you still got a kindergarten mind. So you're going to go to first grade with a kindergarten mind, you're just going to get retained and sent right back to kindergarten. That's exactly what God does. You're going to try to get married and you still got a single mind. You got a single mind, what's going to happen is, man, marriage ain't going to work for you, you'll be right back single again. Got to maximize where you're at. That, does that make any sense? So what, what is D? Dedicate. What is R? Reserve. What is E? Evaluate. All right, let's go to A. We get ready to wrap this up. You got to associate with godly dreamers. Got to associate with godly dreamers. Go to Proverbs 27 and 17. I like this. Iron. Sharpen it. Iron. Now what does that really mean? You got to associate with people who believe what you believe. Amen. Amen. See, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Expedient means uh, everybody's not going to help you on the journey that you're going. So you got to say, hey, before I connect with you, I want to know where you're going. When I was in college, man, I had to take chemistry. And I was not good at chemistry. And uh, none of my partners were good at chemistry. So I had to keep them jokers to the curb. You know, I had to find me somebody who was passing the course. You know, somebody come, come study with me. Man, you dumb, I'm dumb. What we gonna study? 
You know, I need to find me somebody that got an A in this. And I find me somebody that got an A. That's the one I want to study with. Hey, man, your grade is lower than mine. And so here's the thing, man. You got to associate what? With godly dreamers. Let me tell you something. Two things in life was contagious. Dreams and discouragement. They are very contagious. I mean, find somebody who loves to dream, it will just hit off on you. They will excite you. Find someone who will discourage you, they what? Make you be discouraged. A lot of you lose your fire because of who you associate with. Your whole attitude changes because of who you associate with. See? And that's why I told you, man, you got to know who to connect to and who to disconnect from. Anybody know what I'm talking about, amen? You got to decide the people that are getting my inner circle, will they help me or hinder me? Amen. Amen. Will they help me? Let me tell you something. If all your friends are dumber than you, you would never progress in life. I'm telling you, man. You, you got to associate with some people who's smarter than you. Let me tell you something, man. I got people in my life that I know is much smarter than I am, more gifted than I am, or in position in life that I'm trying to get to. So why do I try to invent the wheel? I just simply what? I simply learn from them. And so what you got to do, man, you got to what? You got to associate because only iron will sharpen iron. Dirt will not sharpen iron. Glass will not sharpen iron. Iron. Get rid of your dirt friends and your glass friends. What you need is some iron that will help sharpen a few. Amen? Here's the last one. M. M. Make your dream public. Make your dream public. And what I mean by make your dream public, God has put a dream in your life. Tell other, tell other people about it. Tell other people about it. I mean, talk about it. Talk about your dream. And let me tell you why you need to talk about it. See, there are three things you need to do. You got to see a dream. You got to sense a dream. But you also got to state your dream. Because you don't really know who you always talking to when you talk about your dream. Because you never know who will help you with it if they knew you had it. Amen. Did that make sense? I mean, just because you took, man, I, I got a dream. I want to do this. I got a dream. I want this to happen in my life. And God has told me this is going to happen in my life. And there's somebody said, say, you know what? I can help you with that. I can help you with that. When I first came here uh, in 1983, I was renting a house uh, over on, on um, uh, um, Alfred Lane. And then I left Alfred Lane. I rented another house on Gerald Drive, which is over there off Windsor Spring. And uh, just in the grocery store one night, and I was telling the guy, we were just talking, we hit up a conversation, and we were just talking. And I said, you know what, man? I said, you know, I'm, uh, he said, where do you live at? I said, I live on Gerald Drive and renting this house, but I'm tired of renting, man. I, have, I, I, I was owning a house before I even came to Augusta, and I just know that God is going to give me another house eventually. And the guy said, you know what? I'm glad I got a chance to talk to you. He, I said, why? He said, because I got a house. He said, I am a captain in the military, and my orders are getting ready to change. And I just met this house. It's only two years old. And now I need someone to take over that house. I said, what? He said, yes. And back then they had where you can assume a house without credit check. But because I talked about what I wanted and talked about my dream, didn't know who I was talking to, didn't know that God had set somebody up to help me. Other people will help you if they know it. And somehow you got to what? You got to make it public. Be able to make it public. Don't talk about your dream. And you'd be surprised, man, who God would raise up. Yes, Anybody know what I'm talking about? All I did was talk about oxtails, and guess what? Oxtails came out of the woodwork. I mean, that's how it happened, man. I said, oh, man, I wish I had me some oxtail. I just, if I had never talked about it, somebody would have never known that we would need to bless him with that. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Make your dreams public, man. There's nothing wrong with that. So let's go back to it again as we get ready to close and wrap this up. Number one, number D, what's number D? You got to dedicate your life to God. You want to discover God's real dream for your life? Dedicate your life to him. What's number R? You got to reserve some private time with God alone. Because you can't hear him if you're talking. You got to be quiet so you can hear him. And then ask God to give you the direction he wants your life to go in. Amen. What's, the, what's number E? 
evaluate your abilities, man. You got to make sure that you operate within your calling and you are committed to the right things. And guess what? Consider that God has a time that he wants things to be done. And then what's number eight? Associate with other godly dreamers, man. Watch your company. Watch the people you put in your life. You know, you know hang with folk that go help you and not with people who go hinder you. And then what's number M? Make your dream public. Talk about it, man. Talk about it. You never know God. who would God raise up to be able to bring the help that you need. At the end of my journey, I want to have the testimony of David. And I want to glue this final scripture with you today. Acts 13 and 36. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, he fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. Lord, help me to serve my own generation, but let me serve it by your will. So when sleep come, I can be laid to rest. Amen? Give God praise and glory. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God's dream for your life, man. Listen, man. Listen, again, today we just want to continue to let you know at GYZ, we are concerned about your salvation. In the midst of this pandemic and everything that is happening uh, with our economy and all the things you can list that's going on in the world today, we need God's help uh, to be able to uh, make it through this world. And if any time like this, God is just getting out of your attention. You know what darkness do? Darkness lets you know you need to turn the light on. If it wasn't dark, you wouldn't put a light on. And so therefore, we're living in some dark times. And now what we need to do is turn on the light. And Jesus is the light of the world. Amen? Amen. If you don't have a personal relationship with him today, we want you to know that you can have. The Bible says not the will of God that any should perish, but all should come in the knowledge of him. And that's the wonderful thing that God would do, that whosoever will, the Bible said, let him come. You want to know more about this Jesus, you want to know more about your salvation, know more, know more about your walk with God, know more about what, what, you know, if you're not sure you're going to go to heaven when you die. We want you to be helped here at GYZ. If you've got a personal prayer need, you know, we want to pray for you as well. We have ministers who will do that for you. Hey, give us a call at 706-724-1720. That's the church's number. You're going to hear it again at the end of the broadcast. And uh, we want you to know that uh, just leave a message and we'll have one of our ministers to give you a call and be sure that we communicate with you about Jesus Christ, man. Don't leave earth without Christ. That's the most important thing that you need to understand. Okay, on this coming Sunday, we're going to continue our series on this coming Sunday, and we're going to be talking about you got to know your margin. If you're going to have a live well life, you got to know the margin of your life. Amen? Because so many people are trying to live outside of the margin, outside of the boundary. And so God has a boundary for my life. He really do. Amen? And I call it a margin. When I was in school, when you had to write, you couldn't write outside the margin. They put, they put, a, they put a line on the paper and said, now that's the margin here. You don't write. So God has a margin for your life. Amen? How many people have got into bad relationship because you went outside the margin? I mean, God already done drew the line, but now you done went outside the line and picked up something that was outside your margin. We're going to talk about how to know your margin. How many of you want to hear that word? Amen. This coming Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, here, we're going to be broadcasting live streaming here at GYZ. All right, in the middle of this pandemic, we want to continue to pray for the pandemic that God would bring the healing that only he can bring. We do believe today that only God can do that. We are praying for all of those who are sickened by this uh, virus and other illnesses as well. All of our sick and all of our shut in, all those who are hospitalized, we pray for them as well. We pray for the bereaved, uh, the who are bereaved, especially from this pandemic as well. And then we want to pray again, please help me to continue to intercede for nurses and doctors and medicines and the hospitals, amen? 
for they are instruments of healing. And I'm going to tell you something, they are risking their lives, their families, in order to save our lives. And so we definitely want to continue as a community of faith to pray for them. Pray for our national leaders, both national, state, local. Pray for the leaders who are leading us, man, that God would give them the wisdom to give us the things that we really need. And we just pray that God would just be glorified in the process. Amen. And so we're going to continue to ask you to do that as well. Let's, uh, let us pray. God, we want to thank you again for the word. We thank you for what you have done, for what you continue to do with us, to us, and through us, and for us. And God, we continue to commit ourselves to you right now. Continue to, lead, to walk with us. Continue, Lord, to show us your way. And Lord, give us the courage to walk within that which you will show us. Glorify yourself as only as you can. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Let us all say together, amen. 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 God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in today. A CD of today's message can be mailed to you for just $7. Please call the church office at 706-724-1720 and reference today's date or sermon title when placing your order. If you would like to become a member of our church or are in need of prayer, call the church office at 706-724-1720 or join our prayer call. The information is listed on the screen. GYZ is a Bible teaching church seeking, reaching, and teaching all to live for Christ. We invite you to tune in again for our regular broadcast, Tuesdays at 1030 a.m., Wednesdays at noon, and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. You can also follow us on social media at GYZ Augusta. Please be sure to like our pages and even share them with a friend. If this program has been a blessing to you, please consider giving to our ministry. We have many ways to give, including online through the Give Plus app, our church website at gradyyoungzion.org, or you can give easily via cash app. Just type in G-Y-Z-A-U-G. Don't miss another dynamic sermon series led by our own Pastor William B. Blunt, starting next week. The keys to a well-lived life. Invite a friend to tune in and be blessed by this teaching. Until we meet again, we pray you have a blessed week. May the Lord continue to cover your families with his hedge of protection and grant you peace in the midst of this pandemic.